Thanks, Dan. And welcome to Shmoo, guys. So, can everybody hear me all right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, my name is Eric Johansson. This is Paul Holman. And uh, let's see, we're not here to pimp any particular technology or business or anything else. We're just here to make you feel really insecure about the websites you're all going to go check out when you get home. So, basically, um, we're going to talk about information security and how, how that impacts you and how you can uh, enable uh, your own security. In short, you know, I see things like this. This was a first grade class. Um, passwords posted on the wall. Now, you'd think these are just children and teachers, but, you know, we see this all over the place. Security can have huge impacts on your business. Um, organizations struggle with uh, keeping things secure, and, and it can really have an impact on your bottom line. And when it comes to personal use, personal security, you know, you can always use a password journal. This is actually voice activated, so you can feel secure in knowing that the plastic is solid. Uh, so, let's see, at this point, um, you guys use websites all the time. It has all your information in it. You enter, you know, <laughs> information about where you, uh, where you go to school and other such things. Um, your passwords are stored in all of these websites. And ultimately, you end up with situations where with a cross-site scripting vulnerability or Jack other such up this things. Mic. End of message. To delete this message. All right, so here, here's an example, a quick demo we're trying. To hear more options, press zero. So uh, is Brie Pettis still here? Yeah. All right, yeah, so uh, sorry, Brie, but we're going to update your voicemail no message. for personal options. So, uh, you know, at this Hold point... Brie, <laughs> Morgan, hey, I'm trying to find this place. I'm right by where uh, I think it is. <laughs> so, that's your brother. That's sorry Bree's about that, Brie, but, uh, yeah, ultimately, like, that's an example of an application gone wrong. We have... Uh, with simple caller ID spoofing, you can pretty much take over anyone's voicemail, and that's true for most of the carriers that are out there. So, this is just a demo. Sorry, Brie, we had to make you a victim. So, why am I calling my own? So, uh, this, this photo here is actually kind of interesting. This is a secured bank facility. That big green button there actually unlocks all the doors that you're not supposed to be able to get into. So, I don't know. I just collected a bunch of random photos. They're not necessarily related to what we're talking about. But uh, when it comes down to websites and your personal information, there are cases where all that you need to do is uh, click on the wrong link, you get prompted for a password, and you're going to enter it. So, um, there are cases here. If there were more laptop users here, I, I was hoping to capture someone's password on the Wi-Fi, but a lot of events like this, you capture you know, large corporations, usernames and passwords to their mail servers and all sorts of exciting things. So use SSL uh, and other such things. This, this is a license plate. You guys are probably all familiar with this. If you've gotten a speeding ticket in Seattle, and you... <laughs> If you uh, get a speeding ticket in Seattle, it shows up on the, on the website. And if you punch in a license plate, you can see how many tickets people have had. And it gives you their name and their address. So you can actually resolve someone's license plate to their name and address. And then you can look up their phone number and call them and say, Hey, dickhead, why'd you cut me off? So... <laughs> You know, there's, there's a fair amount of confusing information out there, and it's never clear what... Uh, hey, this is Brie Pettis. I'm starring on The Muppet Show with Miss Piggy. Please leave me a message, and I'll get right back to you. <laughs> so here, here's a device you guys are probably familiar with. Getting into your building, dialing uh, by name, right? You want to visit your buddy. You uh, search for their name, you look for Brie Pettis, you hit go, right? And uh, the way these devices work is they use the phone line and dial your home phone. So if you can determine what the phone number is for that device, um, basically you can call it. And you might not think that's actually a vulnerability, but the way these devices work is you can gain access to a building by dialing 9. So if you can determine the number for that box and call it right at the same time you hit call Brie and then dial the 9 key, the front door pops open. So uh, basically a lot of these physical security devices aren't real security. They're, they're, it's nothing but security theater. So think about you guys as you're building software and building hardware, think about how they're going to be abused and you can make much better systems. So, um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time building breaking things and watching Pablo's. <laughs> hey, what's he talking about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is liquid nitrogen freezing a balloon. I uh, ran out of photos, so... <laughs> Get 
<laughs> so, you know, some folks are honest. You know, I, I appreciated this picture I saw in Montana um, because uh, it was just really honest and straightforward. Someone found a tent rolling down a road. Come, take it back. Um, but ultimately, messages you see, you know, may not always be sincere. So, when you see a message from your friend, or see a call from your friend, or anything else, think about what systems are are in use in that communication. Make sure that they're they're genuine. So, anyway. Uh, ShmooCon, we talk about breaking and building things. That's my promotion for you. Um, ultimately, it will hopefully be better presentations than what I'm offering up here, but... Now uh, when I start singing? Yep. <laughs> Give us a show. Here. Dance? Alright. Breeze voicemail. Oh, listen to Breeze voicemail. Alright, thank you guys. Confirmation.